Isaiah 24 and 21, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones, the high ones, remember, the lofty, the proud, Esau, that's them, the high ones that are on high. That's your top banking families right now. Your Rothschilds and your Rockefellers and your DuPonts. Finally, for all the crimes that they've committed, going back to their descendants, going back all the way to the Bourget family, right? And going even further back than that, because they got to pay for what they did. Hell, they got to pay for what they did going back to Alexander the Creek. You know, this is why the scripture have said, Esau shall be a fugitive from justice. They haven't paid for the crimes that they've committed. The horrific crimes they have committed. So finally, all the horrific crimes that the top banking elite have committed, they will finally pay for now. Now it's payment time. And they're going to pay underneath us. Let me read it again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. That is your top banking family. They shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. Now, earlier in the other scripture, Isaiah, it speaks about what? As a matter of fact, let's go back to it. Recap. Isaiah 14 and 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. So now you understand what that pit is talking about. And literal, it's a literal pit. Okay, a literal pit. Now, if you go in the book of Psalms, the 149th chapter, clearly tells you we're going to bind their kings with chains. Let's, let's bring that in. Psalm 149, and uh, we're going to get right to the point. Uh, the 8th verse. To bind their kings with chains, and their nobles with feathers of iron. So literally, we're going to put chains on them. After Yahweh has broken, because it's only Yahweh that can break that power. When Yahweh comes back, among the things that are on his agenda, number one is to break the power of Esau. That's exactly one of the main reasons he's coming back to deliver his elect and to break the power of Esau. So once he breaks the power of Esau now, what's going to be done with their banking families? The top elite of them, they're going to be alive. Okay, They have their comfortable bomb shelters, they have their uh, means of escape, and the Heavenly Father is going to allow them to escape. Why? So that they can be put immediately into slavery. And we're reading it here. This is where Psalm 149 comes in. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. So that's literal. We're literally, us, the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as part of our blessings, we're literally going to slap chains on these top banking families and their descendants. Okay? This is what is meant by Psalm 149 and 8. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Literal. This is literal. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. And you know we're not going to do it gingerly. We're going to do it as rough as you can imagine. Slapping chains on them. Beating the hell out of them. Beating them down. You know. We're going to be very, very nasty them, okay? <laughs>